lounge and sun. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan. And back with me is Jen. We haven't done this in a while. I'm so happy to have her back. Yay, we- I'm so excited to be back, finally. Yeah, we're <laughs> going to talk Strangers in Paradise, which is a book that I know you have loved for a long time. I have, for whatever reason, it took me a very, very long time to read it. I'm very excited to talk about it, though, because I absolutely love that book. It was not what I thought it was going to be either. Oh, I'm curious about that because yeah. I feel like this is so your style. Like you, I, I knew you were going to love this book. I was like, Ryan would love this book. Absolutely. But I, what were you expecting? A, a lot of what I expected was going to be that slice of life type of story. Right. But it was the other stuff with like <laughs> Kachu's back background, you know, yes. or I'm like, yes. The, what the fuck is it like I wasn't expecting that you know like her whole story and like it having to do with like killers and fucking assassins and stuff like that you know like or maybe not assassins not the right word but you know what I mean like just yeah, like, like mob a, stuff yeah gangster a gangster yeah. life <laughs> secret like secret like not society but like you know like secret like people running the world and stuff like yeah, that like you know like, secret politics and stuff yeah like, that. like I when I started seeing that I'm like what the fuck is this book you know <laughs> and and like we I mean today we we discussed talking about I guess what's the there's five volumes of the ones you have right six, or, six okay volumes. six so we're gonna talk about the first one is what Which we're is- gonna do so I have the pocket, but it's called, oh, it's blurry. It's uh, the pocket edition, I think. Um, yeah, pocket book. Um, so it's like thicker and it re- it's like regroups, regrouping a few like trade paperbacks in it. But I have it's like, like 300 pages. It's uh, 344. Right. So that's where I, that's where I originally stopped. And we scheduling we didn't talk about it right away after I finished it and so I kind of wanted to refresh my memory on the characters a little bit I ended up reading the whole because I got the omnibus the slipcase yeah so I finished the first one the book is so good I'm so mad that I didn't read it sooner because it is something that I really really and Terry Moore by the way is the creator of Strangers Paris we didn't mention him but what a great writer and artist like from the very beginning yeah yeah it's amazing what I really love about this is like it's a slow like ascension so the first book I was like oh that's good but then I kept reading and I was like what the hell like I can't stop I have to purchase everything and just read everything and then there's like all these connecting other stories to it because Strangers in Paradise is like the like the core story but then there's like there's Echo there's Rachel Rising there's um I think there's another one that I don't remember the title but like there's it's all connecting stories to that like core story which makes it like even better and even more like extraordinary yeah I have to get all those other titles now but I want to get through like the main because yeah. I know that even those two slip cases like there's more but I wanted to check out the rest of that stuff too but I want to finish off those first two volumes because I know he brings it back um in another series because I saw there's another omnibus with like I can't it's like the uh, Roman. 25. New- it's yeah. a Roman number for 25, I think. I mean, look, he's been doing this since I I don't know what year it started, but like early 90s. Because eventually, because I think he even starts getting printed at, at image for a second or through Wildstorm, if I remember correctly. I yeah. Be, because he has those Jim Lee pages. Like that, that's where that's where I stopped when we were gonna talk. I was like, what the fuck? Like Jim Lee drew. Yeah, but that's it's, it's 93. been a long 93. 93. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, he's been doing it for 30 years all by himself. Like, and it's interesting, like the publication history of it, because like he starts with, I guess, Antarctic Press. Yes. Is is how he starts. Then he's doing image, then he does it himself, then he goes, he goes like back and forth. It's really, it's really weird. And like I think it's an interesting time too for us to decide to talk about it because they're going, he's putting them back in print in new versions. Yeah. So I know your pocketbooks are a little shorter, right? Yes, they're like very like very yeah. So, so he's doing like though that size volume in terms of page count, but larger, like regular comic size. Like I, I was at the shop the other day and I walked in and it's like sitting right, right when I walked in and I so I, I kind of wish I would have just got those instead of the slipcase because like the like I, I was saying it to you before we recorded like the glue on that thick ass book just didn't rip but it came unattached, you know. Um, yeah. 
but anyways, that's besides the point. Uh, so the relationship too between Cachu and Francine is something that like, you talked about, like the slow burn, like it, like it slowly goes. I even felt that when I put the book down and went back into it, like it took me, even though I already knew the world, it still took me time to kind of get back into it where I'm like, yeah. okay, now I'm going to like push through and just keep reading. And yeah, because you, you slowly like learn about the characters and you don't know their relation, like the full extent of their relationship, like all like right away you just have to like let the build up like like build up and then just like wait until everything is revealed it's it's very like a very interesting way of writing because he just throws you in in the yeah. beginning there's no yeah. like there's no, no backstory yeah you're they're just living together friends and stuff and and the back and forth between them like I think like well that's the heart of the book is like the relationship yeah. between the two of them I'm trying not to go too far forward <laughs> in the book. It's hard because like I, I jumped ahead, but like Francine loves her, but not necessarily in the way that Cachu loves her. But then like, it's it's just weird because like they both love each other in a certain way, but you can never, it's kind of always like this underlying love, like yeah. of them wanting to be in a relationship, but also like not really fully giving into that. And I yeah. think that, that the way he plays with that is interesting. But also I think this book and this story is a great example of how there's different kind of love but it's all love it's just everybody like they all love each other but it's it's a special it's undescribable and it's not like I'm in love with you it's just I love you in in, in so many different ways you know and I think it's very poetic and very beautiful well, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, yeah, it is showing a different kind of love that you could have for a person where you don't have to be in a relationship with them. But there is, I don't know, I maybe I'm yeah. getting that more from like later on, but they do have it. And then like David kind of coming into the mix, got his stories fucked up too. Where, where, yeah. where it goes is fucked up. But, yeah. but <laughs> the way he's introduced, you know, like he's like in love with Cat Shoe and stuff and she's like not really wanting to be in a relationship with the man and like, um, and then when you find out too, like that she was working, she was a working girl, I'll, I'll call yes. her. And she was sleeping with like some of the high power people in the world. But then she also had this relationship. Darcy was her name, right? Darcy, yes. Darcy, yeah. Then she, who was like the head of this organization of the Parker girls, right? Is what exactly. So there's just so much going on. And then like, well, I guess I'll spoil it, but <laughs> like learning that spoiler alert yeah I mean this book is this book's been out for a long time I already said it. it started 30 years 30 years ago but like finding out that David was her brother was Darcy's yeah. brother and he was sent there and when I saw that I was like oh my god dude like I that's I think that's when I really got into the book like deeply like I'm like I can't put this book down and I I powered through the rest it was so hard to put it down because I didn't want to read ahead but which I ended up doing anyway um but yeah, but he still loves her. So he's like sent there. It's just so weird. He's sent there to spy on her and he ends up actually falling in love with her. And you, you I mean, eventually you'll find out like that he's loved her for a long time. Yes. You know, like well before <laughs> coming into contact with her at that moment. Yeah, the, it's just crazy juggling all those characters and all those different personalities because everybody has from the very beginning such distinct personalities. Like Francine's yeah. like this tall kind of, I don't want to say it like, I mean, she, at one point they call her an Amazon, um, but I think that goes later, but like, she just doesn't know how to find true love, you know, yeah. like that's, that's to me is, is like at, the, at her core and like the only really true love she has is Kachu, but she doesn't, you know, like people like, oh, like you guys are a couple, you guys are low with each other. And she's always like, no, I don't love her like that. And then she'll call Kachu. She's like, oh, I know you want to be with me but I don't love you like that. And there's always that, that back and forth. Kachu's my favorite character of the book. Yeah. I love, for me, Kachu and David are my favorite. David is just because he's like, he's, a, he's, he's growing on you. Like in the first book, you might not like, you're just like, well, whatever. But then it's just like, he, he becomes such an important character, but Kachu is my number one for sure. She's such a badass, like just a, a badass woman like she doesn't give a fuck about anything she can literally kill anybody she wants like she just doesn't give a shit and I love her for that yeah I, yeah where she especially like further past the first yeah. book dude I fucking I love where her character goes but it's 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 just her her sense of humor too and her sarcastic 
tone that she has when she's talking to people and yeah. she and she too like she's constantly like not knowing you'll think she feels a certain way but then she will do something or say something that completely contradicts what you're thinking so you can never fully understand who she is and what she's feeling yeah that's a skill but on terry that, moore's part a, to write her that yeah, way yeah because we can really feel like the spy ish like this I, i'm gonna say spy like the spy personality um because you never like even as a reader you are in her mind and you still don't fully know what she's thinking and what she's gonna do next that's like such a like great like just an amazing writing skill like you said because it's it's it brings their like it keeps the reader on its to on its toes and it's just like give like a great suspense to the book and this is what makes you want to read more and more and more as you go yeah I, it's it's really hard to not talk about where <laughs> I wish I didn't read further but yeah I just I I love you know like I think it's in the first book too where Francine starts to learn more about what cashew has been hiding about right yeah so that's that's kind of like where the story is going is that Francine only knows Kachu from like high school so she only knows like high school Kachu, which is a very different not a very different person but just like a a surface person and then as they grow up together and go in this adventure and meet David and everything Kachu's past and like second life if I want to like, say that just like comes in and Francine just has like a very different vision of who her friend is and it's just like really jungled up all this this emotion and sentiment that she has towards her and it, it just like grow a different kind of love again like it just grows emotions differently yeah because it because they both have very conflicting ways of which they grew up like Francine had a sheltered life like sheltered at more of like a loving family even though the yeah. dad fucking dipped out on the mom you know like but yeah. she she was loved you know like she had like a, a good a good like kind of stable life whereas Kachu was like had the worst possible childhood yeah. you know again like I'm not going to spoil it but finding out like her her parentage and who her dad was was that fucking like I wasn't expecting that either you know like and and eventually like she's gone right and then like they I mean, I guess this is something you learn later, but there is like a gap where they weren't together for a while and then come yeah. back into each other's lives. And I just think that, uh, you know, like she's, whether or not they're, you want to say like Kachi's in love with her or not, which I think like she has more of a stronger love for Francine as, as opposed to Francine for her, which yeah. I think is like very evident, but she's so protective of her. Like yeah. so the guys that she's dating, like that douchebag Freddie, that just the scummiest of scumbags in that I book. I kind of love Freddy though. I like I I I love to hate him. Like yeah. I'm like, oh Freddy, come on, man. And I just love like I love when he's there because I'm like, dude, you're so dumb and stupid. Just like go away. But then I want him to come back again. <laughs> I know, and he's gone for a while. Uh, you know, like later on in the book, you don't see him, and then he like makes his comeback, and I'm just oh, like, oh yeah, and it's gold. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, you're still the same piece of shit you were fucking 400 pages ago when I was reading about you. <laughs> But yeah, I think that uh, it's in what's interesting, too, is like Francine has such low self-esteem. So obviously, like, I mean, this is really the, the book is I mean, yeah, there's other stuff going on, but it's really like the he's dissecting like human relationships. Yes. Like, that's what it is. And like watching Francine, like no self-esteem, you know, like just like always hard on herself, can never find love. Well, just seeks it from anybody and everybody you yeah. know whereas Kachu is like, like she's super confident she doesn't she doesn't need that but she's she doesn't diff need to be loved but at the same time she has so much drama that she doesn't know she needs to be loved you know yeah, yeah she's always like she doesn't push Francine away but she'll yeah. push other people you know like she yeah. doesn't ever seek out the love and then even when somebody shows her it takes her a long time to trust somebody obviously right because she's been burned so much and um especially like when she learns about David and yeah. learns like oh dude like that was that, that was hard. hard yeah like I, I can't imagine you know like but she always has that tough exterior but then you'll see those moments where like when she's super hard right and then yeah. when nobody's looking the fucking the tears come you know and the and the real like the the little almost like the little girl inside is coming yeah. out you know like because she has to put on this tough exterior especially for the 
you know, the life she was living. Yeah. And, but I think like, it's when Darcy and that story came into play where I like the book leading up to it. But I mean, and it doesn't, you don't find out about that stuff. I think, I don't, I don't know. I've, I did read the original like first trade paperback, which is very thin. I think it might've been four issues and you didn't learn any of that stuff in there. No, so I think, I think when it's I, three issues. It's three issues, the first uh, paperback. So it's okay. like nothing of the story. <laughs> yeah, so I, I did actually read that. I'm glad I read it, but it was it was a long time ago in between that and then reading it this way. And that's the stuff that really get becomes really intriguing because then yeah. it's like there's all these different plates spinning and there's all this different like who can you trust? What's the real story behind here? And the and the stuff with Darcy, like fight, you know, like she had a relationship with Catcher, even though she yeah. was like sending her on these fucking jobs but i find that it's very like apropos now because i find that darcy's relationship with Chachu is like a lot of grooming because they were in that type of like industry yeah. and environment and it's like when you see how darcy talks to Chachu and interact with Chachu, it's very like a grooming type of relationship which is very uncomfortable because as a reader you know it's wrong but then you just understand better where Chachu is coming from and like like i said like she doesn't want to be loved, but she needs to be loved. And then Darcy comes in and like gives her that different type of love again, which is not really love. And you, your head just go like in a spinning wheel, you know? Yeah. No, this book is definitely like reading it now. It, to me, it feels ahead of its time. It feels yes. like if this book, not to say that it doesn't do well, obviously it does well enough to where he's only doing this book. And this is all he does is stuff revolved around his own creations but I I thought like what if this came out 10 years ago you know would it yeah. would it be, have been more popular would people be talking about it more now than like I, I don't know I know it was like obviously critically loved back then because I always remember seeing it whether it was online or in magazine well like wizard magazine from back in the day like or comics journal or stuff like that so this book was talked about but it was never like in my face like even Love and Rockets, people, I, yeah. I would hear more about Love and Rockets than I did Strangers in Paradise. These books do, to me, like kind of go hand in hand a little bit, even though there's like a, they, they were created 10 years apart. They both have that like slice of life flavor to it. But Terry goes in like a completely different direction yeah. in terms of like what, you know, like backstory and where it goes. I have no idea where this book is going. And I love that because even though I did read past where we're kind of mentioning um even from that first half of the book to the second half of it it becomes something completely different you yeah. know like there's so much other things that happen um and I'm just excited to see kind of where the characters go from oh, here it's amazing and yeah. I'm just gonna I don't want to say too much but I'm just gonna say pay attention to every characters even the ones that are there just for one or two pages just pay attention to them because you're going to be surprised by the second, third, or five, fourth volume. Like, all the characters are just there for a purpose. And you and you understand everything at the end. And it's amazing. But to answer your question about, like, what if it came out, like, 10 years ago or even, like, nowadays? For me, I, I, I ask myself that same question, too. And it's just because I feel like this book, if it would come out now or like a few years earlier than now, like in the 20, like 2020-ish era, I feel like people wouldn't appreciate it as much because we're, it's such a slow, it's a slow burn. It's a very slow writing, lots of details. It's all about like slice of life and lots of details and lots of like attention. And I feel like nowadays, <laughs> We all love like bam, 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 boo, boo, doo, 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 and everything like needs to be like active and fast and and like people. I feel like people don't take the time as much anymore to read a book for the characters. It's more about the story. So I feel like today's reader might have like like today's new readers might have an issue with like getting attached to a character so like with with such a slow timeline. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess you're I right. Yeah. yeah, I guess we do live in the in the day where people want everything now. You know, like shows yeah. are released with every episode. You know, like yeah. people hate when they have to wait a week for an episode. And I just think about it, I'm like, you have no idea. Like there was times where you'd have to wait like three months 
<laughs> between the first half of the season and the second half of the season, you guys are complaining about a week, you know, like it's, it's crazy to me. Um, but yeah, I guess you're right. I guess I just mean in terms of like the contents yes, of the, content the story, for sure. like I feel like it would hit differently now, but I mean, there are also, I think there were some stuff, at least in that first like thousand pages or whatever, 1100 pages that I read, um, where I'm like, Ooh, I wonder if somebody would have a problem with that. You know, like there's. I've seen some comments of people being triggered by the um, love triangle. Well, it's not really a triangle, but like I'm gonna say a triangle um, because it's, it's three people. But people have been like triggered about like the relationship between Kachu and Francine as just like they they've been saying it's like it's just a way to like uh, I don't know how to explain it, but like um, it's like a, a male fantasy like a two woman male fantasy. And I'm like, if you think that you didn't read enough, like for honestly, personally, like you didn't read enough of the book to uh, fully understand the relationship between the two of them. And it, I don't, for me personally, I don't see it as a male fantasy. On the contrary, I feel like that's a really great um, story about two female and two like two female characters just loving each other without like labeling it necessarily and just like getting through life together and like building their relationship in their own personal ways you know yeah i don't see the male fantasy thing because like there's no you should look into the reviews i'll look into it yeah recent reviews (laughs) there's no like to me it's not like there's any sexual tension in the book at all there's no like there's nothing like that First of it's all, it's never and about it, sex. It's about emotions. Francine could give two shits about David. At one point, she just wants him gone. Like, yeah, to get, get him out of here. You know, like, and then when she finds out, like, I, this is going forward, but whatever. You know, like, she gets jealous of him because she yeah. wants catch you for her for herself. You know, like, but doesn't want to be in a relationship. With, like, it's I don't see the. That's why I gotta I gotta look at these fucking reviews because that, that's send, that's crazy to, to me. That's yeah. crazy. Like as a guy reading it, I don't get that, you know. So like, I don't, I don't pick up on that. Maybe some people can see that. Is it who's saying it? Guys or well, I guess women would maybe say women. that. Women would say that. Yeah. Um, but it's like re- like internet reviews, you know. So you can't take them seriously. But I always love to check what people are saying, like on Goodreads or like just like regular like internet blog review and stuff like that. And sometimes I'm just like, I don't think you read enough of the book. <laughs> Yeah, I also got off of Goodreads. Like I was on there for a couple of years. Like I just I had to stop. First of all, because I was like getting like obsessed with like meeting like these crazy goals I'd set for myself. And then like <laughs> seeing some of the reviews, like I don't know, like the reviews on there kind of remind me of the reviews on like Yelp, where people oh. just like don't <laughs> they don't have the balls to say it in person to somebody. So they just yeah. go there to say it. And I'm like, I can't, I can't because they like some of the reviews were just ridiculous. Like I just, I, it's stuff that I loved and and I can respect when somebody has a different opinion than I do, but sometimes it's like, you guys don't even know what you're talking about. Did you even read the book? Would be yeah. most of what my opinion would be on the review. So at least now, I don't want to say it's an overlooked book in general in the history of comics, because it's not, it's got its recognition. It's got its acclaim. It's got, you know, the love has been thrown at Terry Moore for all the stuff he's done. He still continues to do um, I think I can't remember the name of the book, but there was a. It was still coming out on a monthly basis. It was. It's, uh, um, oh, I know. It's um, the covers of the girl in the rain. Yeah, it, it's the character from Rachel Rising, and oh, man, what's the title? I don't. I forgot about it. It's it's not. It's, it's something anyway. But this yeah. this everything about everything from Terry Moore is excellent like everything and like i said pay attention to every damn characters doesn't he do and motor girl too is that a book yeah he does know? motor girl echo uh rachel rising i have all of them give me two seconds so the only one i'm missing is the most recent one the one with the little girl from rachel rising so he does echo which is very interesting it's more like um it's, it's very different than um strangers in paradise it's more like a there's a lot of science involved in this oh yeah so, so there was a customer at the shop when i was in there before I took I got my new job and she was she picked it up she's like have you read this and I I was like reading I was like no and I started reading the back I'm like man I need to read this now I said I just got Strangers in Paradise by him um and it's I was like honestly, you get that Echo is very good because you have the same vibe as Strangers in Paradise but you have that like s- kind of superhero feel to it because like I'm I'm not gonna 
sell the punch or anything. I'm not going to explain too much, but like there's a superhero feel to it. And I loved it. So, you know, it's good if I love the superhero <laughs> feel to a book. Yeah. Uh, but my favorite is absolutely like Rachel Rising. Oh, man. So it's Rachel Rising. This is so good. And again, very different from the two others. Uh, this one is more like um, like a horror type of story. And then you have Motor Girl and you have the most recent ones. You have um, Five Years and then you have Strangers in Paradise um, 25 in Roman numbers. Oh, there's and a the lot I need to watch. Yeah. We should definitely talk about some of those other ones. I'd be down to to talk all that stuff. I got to pick them all up because I I already know. Linked. Yeah, and I already knew like when I stopped at that the 300 page mark or whatever, like right before Jim Lee does the pages, which again, like it's very odd to me. But I was like, dude, I love, first of all, I love his art. Terry Moore's yes. art is like some of my favorite. Um, I love the way he draws people. Like to me, I think it's a fair comparison to say Love and Rockets is a comparable title. If you like Definitely. that, you'll like this. If you like this, you'll like that. Um, but the way he draws his women, much like Jaime, like draws like real women. Like he doesn't yeah. try to make them super skinny. You can see like the little creases or like, you know, if they're a little, little heavier or whatever. The way he draws... Terry Moore draws women is probably the most realistic yeah. in terms of like body type. You know, he doesn't, that's why I said it's not to me, that's not like male fantasy. Like he doesn't, it's not like he's drawing a super skinny chick no. or he's drawing big breasts or whatever, you know, like yeah. he makes them look real and he's not afraid to make them look like, I, I, I hate to say frumpy, but like Francine will look frumpy as hell sometimes, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but then I love what I also really dig about his art is like, he will, while it does have a realistic look to it, he'll make it cartoony sometimes with their reactions. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's something I really dig or like, you know, like he'll add um, like dream sequences and, and the style will be just a little bit different, you yeah. know, and like, and that's how, that's why the Jim Lee pages kind of make sense because it is a dream and then they wake up and then it's back into like his world, you know? I just, I really dug the book, you know, like I, I can't, yeah. I my can't only, say stuff enough. My only little critique is that sometimes I, sometimes I, I feel, especially for blonde characters, I sometimes mix them up a little bit. Like if they don't say their name, sometimes it takes me like a few seconds to understand who's actually talking, not tattoo, but like other characters sometimes oh, i like yeah. What's mix her them name? up a little the, bit the girl that freddie ends up with right and are you, oh, yeah. you're talking about like uh like tambi too right yeah yeah sometimes i'm like i got like, mm. i got and confused then I'm like, too oh, okay, that's her. <laughs> yeah i love tambi's character and finding out her <laughs> oh my god i couldn't believe it i was like you gotta be kidding me like that's that's fucking crazy like yeah. I, and as i was finishing off that first half of the of the slipcase thing like I'm, I won't talk about story because I'll keep it to this, but just like seeing that even this many pages in, you can still surprise me. Like that's yeah. what made me excited for the rest of the back half of that slipcase. Because like, if you can do that 900 pages into this book and you're still like showing me something new that I didn't expect, like that's, that's fucking like, that's planning, dude. Like this is, I, this is not a story that feels like he was winging it or writing it no. as it came like this stuff felt feels like it had to have been planned out because you can't drop these kind of seeds early because if you like if I start thinking about what was happening in the first part of the book like and then you find out later you can see where those seeds had been planted yeah. you know and like and I I didn't even get into like how much of a genius Cashew is like what you like she's brilliant and then yeah. what you what she does she later on to too, like, like where she fucking comes back it's just it's just crazy dude it's just crazy to see because like you 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 feel like you have to be fucking smart to navigate the kind of life she was living but yeah. really her genius like when she starts like what they do with the parker girls and that whole the whole organization thing is just it's insane it's, it's insane it, it's pretty crazy and like she can take a beating man that girl can take a fucking beating too yeah she, that's what I'm saying. She's a badass. She's just badass. Like she can fight. She can take a beating. She's super smart. She's funny. She's like everything, you know, like, but she's flawed. Like she's not a perfect girl, although she's, she has all like extremely strong qualities, you know? Yeah. And David, 
what a sensitive like little like like kind person he is yeah but then like but then you know, not really <laughs> yeah dude it's just it's fucking crazy man and like the whole like the revolving door of like the way people are moving in and out of this yeah. fucking story I, it's hard I, I, it's hard to remember where it left off because i feel like at one okay so at one point i do know like that, that there was plans um where they stole money right from yeah. the park it's from the parker girls or from the organization from one that's, of the client one of the clients yeah that's i think that's where we leave off right it's yeah. like right after they get the money and stuff and like it's just it's just it's just crazy to find like how that went down and like she didn't really like try to do it it was supposed to be like something else um that to me was kind of uh that was a crazy spot to end because I don't know how they were released at this point. Like I, I'm trying to like think about like okay, was there a big gap in time? Like because that's a pretty crazy cliffhanger to end on, and yeah. it feels like there was a jump. I mean, I could be wrong. I'll, I mean, I can look it up real quick. Um, you mean like in the in the publishing? In the publishing. in the publishing. Yeah. I I don't feel it in the book. Because I feel like. Okay, so yeah, like I, I'm looking right now. So it's like the the first volume one was uh, under his abstract studio imprint. That, that was 13 issues. And yeah. then, vol and then, oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Antarctic Press was volume one. Volume two was 13 issues under his own studio. Yeah. And then, and that's where the thriller aspect was, was introduced. You know, like what I was talking about with like the organization. Yeah. And then he goes to Image for volume three. And that's where... That has to be with like you know the Jim Lee stuff. So like I'm trying to think of like the year when that. But yeah, I, I'm wondering like what the what the gap was at that point. It couldn't have been too long. Yeah, I don't think it was too long. But it, honestly, we don't. I don't feel it. Like when I read the complete story, like I don't feel a gap or anything. Which is also like, if there was a gap, this is also a great skill because if he if he paused. To then like start all like start again a little bit later usually you feel like a different like a shift in the writing or a different style or just a different vibe but in strangers in paradise you don't feel that at all it seems like it's all a one-shot story which is very impressive when you think about the writing skill behind it well yeah you think about i mean it's 30 years right there's a total of 90 issues of uh, uh, between yeah. volume between like his like I said between the volume one the volume two and then what becomes volume yeah. three because he doesn't read he doesn't renumber it he keeps the numbering so it yeah. just simply goes to or no no he does I'm sorry I'm, I'm looking further ahead yeah so he does renumber it at, at number one for when it comes to image but it's just I, I don't know and it's it's interesting like I wonder the idea behind going to image right like because that's got to be, they had to have got, got him new readers. Like, and I, there's no other artist that works on this book besides Jim Lee. And, yeah. You know, like, I don't, I mean, that, that had to have only been, I think, I feel like it was under the, this is, this doesn't matter, but I feel like it was under the Wild Star or, or homage imprint. I think that's what he, what's, what he did it under. Cause like Jim Lee back then, like, you know, this is before he sold Wildstorm to DC. He had his imprint where he did uh, Leave It By Chance was another book. So he brought in more of like these like indie guys, like yeah. not necessarily like, you know, like the people from Marvel or DC. And I think that's where Strangers in Paradise came into play. So like he probably got them new readership that they otherwise probably wouldn't have seen because they were by he was publishing on a smaller level, yeah. you know, and I but it's clear, too, that I think he prefers that yeah I think that's yeah, what Terry yeah. you know like he prefers to kind of do his own thing and not have anybody else even have any kind of say in what he's doing because exactly. like that's when you're going to get the best version of him but yeah. again like you said it didn't it also didn't feel like there was a jump in type of writing or storytelling it felt it flowed very with the exception of that jarring difference in art of when you go to Jim Lee's art for <laughs> <Yes>. the <laughs> six or seven pages um it does flow very well but that's why I said like it feels like that could have been a way for there to be that gap in time yeah because if you, what you mean you know because essentially he only really released you know prior to doing the image launch he only did three like you said those three issues a total of 16 issues in that time frame from from the time he launched in 93 until the time he goes to image which again i can't find the exact year um that's only 16 issues so there could have been like even like even if it's like a six month gap you know yeah. like it's still like 
it's still like a significant moment in the life of Francine and Cachu to where like that is such a great cliffhanger. And yeah. even if he didn't continue on, that, that would have been an okay place to kind of end the series. Yeah, definitely. Opinion. Yeah, definitely. Ugh, it's just I don't know. It's just so, it's such a good book. It's just yeah. so well done. Yeah, I, I can't. It's it's hard for me to even say anymore without yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna end up spoiling it. So I'll just leave it at, you know, like it's a great book. If you guys have not read it, you go pick it up. It's now even easier because the new versions are in print. Um, I I think the I think you could always get it from his website, and I'll drop the link to his website down below yeah, you, you can, can get he's still selling them you can get everything direct from him he signs it and he's got yeah. some older versions that are not in shops anymore but they do have new versions that are going to be coming out the first one just dropped so it's never been easier I guess if you want to say it that way you don't have to like seek it out in a different kind of way uh but go pick it up it's one of my favorite books now and I can't yeah it's, read the it's rest. honestly one of my favorite series ever and like, I just, I'm in love with it. Like, uh, it's it's such a great book. I would recommend it like to anyone, honestly. It's such a statement in the coming book industry. Personally, I think so. Yeah, I agree. And um, if you're down, I'd like to talk like the next book yes. <laughs> eventually. I, I'd like to go through the entire series if we could, because like this was a lot of fun to read. And I want to talk to you about what else happens next yes because so, it's gonna go crazier and crazier as we go <laughs> yeah so we'll definitely we'll we'll set that up we'll i'm down to do the entire run because i think it's only only six episodes so um we'll yeah. do that and uh you know for everybody listening and watching make sure you follow us i'm gonna drop uh the links down below hit the subscribe button so you're notified every time a new vid drops and on that note we're out